Welcome back. If you've driven through downtown Sarasota, you've seen the construction, but how much is going on right now? More than 1400 condo units are under construction in the city. Around 1000 hotel rooms are also being added over the past fiscal year. Sarasota's tourist development tax or bed tax brought in a record $20 million. Joining us for more on downtown development is Virginia Haley, president of visit Sarasota County, Kevin Cooper, president and CEO of Sarasota Chamber of Commerce and Kate Lohman. And she is on the steering committee for the Sarasota organization STOP. So thank you all for joining us tonight for this roundtable. First of all, I just want everyone to share their opinions to kind of a baseline as to how you all feel about all of the construction. We'll kind of just go down the table and just let us know overall your, your first thoughts about what's happening in downtown Sarasota. We'll start with you, Virginia. Well, I think uh, one thing that is encouraging is that we're finally seeing uh, some growth in our hotel rooms after 15 years of losing hotel rooms. We, lo we lost almost 600 rooms over the last 15 years. Many hotels were demolished. Uh, everything from the old Half Moon Beach Club on Lido to some of the best westerns on the North Trail. So it is nice seeing it in the positive direction. And I think we have to remember the incredible economic impact that these hotel properties will be bringing to all of us. And the fact it's year round business. It's not just season. Yeah, I think it's worth remembering that development does kind of come in spurts and it really is a stars aligning type of moment where the market demand is in place, the financing mechanisms are in place, the land availability is in place, the zoning codes are right. Uh, everything kind of uh, aligns very well for this to happen. And so right now is a good time when those things are aligning and, and development is able to take place. And you have to remember for 10, 12, 15 years, we did not see development happening. It was not taking place. So sometimes I think, you know, if this were happening incrementally over time, it wouldn't be so uh, uh, noticeable. But the fact that it comes in kind of these development spurts makes it a lot more noticeable, but that doesn't make it any more impactful. It just kind of happens uh, 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 less incrementally over time and more in short spurts, but it's a good thing when these stars align. Well, STOP doesn't have a position on growth either for it or against it. I think what we are concerned about is that when there is growth, that it be quality growth. And when we see development happening in the city, we want to retain the, the high quality of life that really brought a lot of us here in the first place. And I think a lot of people are concerned that maybe we're not doing such a good job at preserving some of that quality of life factor. Right. And now, Virginia, one of the things we talked about in Ray's story was that so many of these projects were approved. So what is the process, if we could talk about that a little bit, the process for getting the green light to move ahead and why was it that so many were approved? Um, Sarasota really rebounded uh, during the economic downturn. Sarasota County increased the amount of tourist development tax that was used from, for promotion and we were able to get the word out successfully about Sarasota and in turn create that demand. Now hotels don't just get built. Their finance companies, their investors come in, they look very carefully at the market and one of the things they noticed was we had over 70 percent year-round occupancy and no new hotel rooms in, in basically a decade. So that created that kind of demand that allows these projects to get financed and, and move forward. Now we're seeing a bit of a slowdown in that, but certainly with that strong demand we saw five years ago leading up to it, you see the results. And what's the process that they have to go through those developers as far as getting approved through the city? I am not as familiar with that. Once uh, they meet that mark of being able to obtain financing, then it does become a, a land use process with the city of Sarasota. We're not directly involved with that. Now, Kevin, you, you would probably point out that a lot of people approach the city or approach you all and want to develop here, but not all of these projects either A, get the financing or B, get approved. Uh, so it's not just that every single project that comes in ends up being constructed. Yeah, no doubt. It, it, it's an arduous process to take a project through inception through to actually breaking ground and making it happen. Make no mistake, it is not an easy process here in the city of Sarasota or anywhere else in the country. Uh, there's a lot of layers of, of legislation 
legislative process that goes through into making sure uh, zoning codes, for example, are in place that allow you to do what happens. And zoning code is, is kind of a give and take process. What it is there for is to protect, uh, let's say, from a, a residential unit being next to a, a glue factory that might uh, have noxious odors or, or, or smoke and some problems there. Uh, but the, the give in that process is to lay the clear groundwork for what can be done with land. And so when development looks at an area, they see what can I do with this land? What are the possibilities? And, and that's what kind of starts the ball rolling. But it can be a very lengthy, costly process for someone to bring uh, a development through to fruition. And so uh, to be certain, we're not seeing more than half of what is conceptualized actually coming through to fruition. And, and what is coming through fruition is, is what is in the code, what is asked for, what is was clearly laid out as possibilities uh, for the land. So uh, there, there's no real need to, to legislate uh, market demand or questions about that. that that'll work through the market. Uh, what we need to focus on as a community is, hey, where do we want things? How do we want them structured? And, and, and and that'll work itself out. All right. Well, we have much more to discuss with this topic of conversation. We'll continue in a moment. And when we return, we'll also have a check on our forecast. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're discussing the new hotels being built in downtown Sarasota. Our guests tonight are Virginia Haley of Visit Sarasota County, Kevin Cooper of the Sarasota Chamber of Commerce, and Kate Lohman of the organization STOP. And Kate, I want you to briefly tell us when we talked earlier about the approval process, mm -hmm. you said there are some issues that your organization would like to infuse into that process that are not there now. Can you explain some of those? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, Thirteen years ago, the city of Sarasota adopted a new system for approving projects for the downtown area. And it's called administrative approval, which basically means that no matter the size of the project, if the project meets the code, it's approved by city staff. And there's never any public hearings, there's no votes by the city commission, so that even a project like the size of the view never had any public hearings. And we really believe that the city should go back to the system it used to have, and which it actually still has outside the downtown, where you do have public hearings for large and intense projects. And the idea is not somehow, you know, that you're going to stop these things because, as you were saying, there is a code about what can be built and so on. But if you have the conversation between the developer, the city, and the public about what people's concerns are, what their expectations are, then there's room for, often there is room for certain adjustments that make everyone happier. And right now there's no mechanism for those discussions to happen. And Kevin and Virginia, your thoughts on, on possibly changing that to a, a public a hearing method? Well, ultimately, the mechanism is the zoning code. Uh, zoning code since their inception in the United States and New York City back in the 19, 1916, they were always intended to be predictable, fair, equitable, and cost effective. And if you want to infuse public opinion into what should be built, how it should look, how it should feel, architectural standards, that, the zoning code is the place for that. Uh, and so administrative approval is just a way to create that predictability, the fairness, and the equitability of, of what goes on inside a community. So uh, there's really no need to inject any further piece in that uh, uh, aside from the administrative approval. Once you're, once you're in that rubric and you look at the zoning code and you've created that roadmap, you've created the rules of the game. There's no reason to change the rules in the third quarter. You know it going in, and that's what creates investment and interest in the community, is that predictability, that roadmap, that clear and definable rule, rules and systematics set up whereby investment knows it can work. Otherwise, it's kind of a black box. You don't know the inside of it, and, and no one wants to be involved in that game. So where is the in-between, though, if, if there are people out there watching saying, we feel like our opinions aren't being heard. We live here, we've lived here for decades, and, and we see the aesthetics changing, and, and we feel like we have nowhere to go to voice our concerns. Yeah, you know, Andres Duwani, who is uh, intimately involved with the, with the implementation of the current zoning code in the city of Sarasota, is, is widely respected uh, amongst planners in the industry. And if it, there is a, a process in place to change the zoning code. And if that's what people want to do, if that is what the community wants reflected in the future development, then there are processes in place to already do that. You don't need to create new processes to change it. Uh, change the zoning code, go forward with that, and, and you won't need to worry about it. It'll be, again, clear to both. And, and the, the whole idea of it is that there's transparency for the stakeholders, both on the residential community side, but also the development and investment interest. Uh, it creates a fair and level playing field and transparency for everyone involved.
And Virginia, you pointed out in Ray's story that we should only be adding three to five percent of our current inventory, but we're right now at 25 to 30 percent. Where do you see that going? Do you see that having an effect with hotel rooms that aren't being used? Is that going to be a problem? I think our challenge um, as the marketing entity is to make sure we continue to drive demand to make sure not only are we filling these new rooms, but that we make sure our existing hotels remain robust with their business. And I think we have a good plan in place for that. We've seen strong domestic demand. We have months out of the year that we're already at, you know, 95% occupancy. We have to turn away business. We had a group that wanted to come here for the NCAA uh, football championships in Tampa. Our hotels currently couldn't fit them. So there, there is a need for these rooms. We will be challenged in, in filling them, but I am very confident that we'll be able to do the job. And the good thing for the community is at the end of the year, each and every household uh, gets the equivalent of $600 in taxes that they don't have to pay because the visitors were paying that sales tax for them. Now you mentioned about those booked hotel rooms. I think anyone who's ever booked a hotel in this area during season knows it's either booked or very expensive. So will we expect to see maybe more vacancy leading to possibly lower prices since our supplies going up? I think it's inevitable that you'll see uh, a softening in the in the in the rates for the rooms uh, when you do add that many. But I will say we've absorbed the loft open last year uh, and things are going very well for that hotel and all the surrounding hotels downtown. The other thing we've seen is they're now more spread out in their openings. Originally, we were very nervous because it was one opening right after the other. Now it looks like we have some nice gaps so the market and the demand can catch up to those rooms. But there, there will be a softening of the rates. Now, Kate, I know not just your group, but so many people in Sarasota, even if they enjoy this new development, they worry about the traffic, which is already an issue, and the transportation, everyone trying to get around, not just tourists, but for those of us who live here. What are your major concerns that the people in your organization feel about adding all of this development with our traffic issues? Well, again, we don't have a <coughs> position on growth per se. Uh, we have argued that the city of Sarasota should um, put greater effort into making sure that the numbers that go into its traffic studies are really accurate and also that the city should be looking at uh, overall traffic issues. You know, right now there's a lot more focus on a project by project traffic study, but when you add them all up, where are we there? Um, so we have asked the city to do a, a citywide network traffic study, and we're hoping that they'll do that. If I could, could I go back to the sure. zoning question for a minute? Um, because I wanted to say that one of the problems with the administrative approval system is that there's no organic way for the zoning code to change, because there's no place for people to really be talking about the issues that concern them. And STOP um, really just started in the fall, and we already have like seven neighborhoods endorsing us. Why? Because they're concerned about some of the things that they see, and there hasn't been any mechanism to talk about those issues. Uh, so I, I really think that, um, that any zoning code has to evolve over time, especially when you're looking at infill in a city like ours. And there needs to be a place for people to participate. And Kevin, do you have any further response on that? Sure. I mean, there is a place to participate. It's called City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, you have five elected commissioners. Two of them are at large. Three of them are by district. There is very clearly a place for the people to voice their concerns. They elect them uh, on a rolling two-year basis by whether they're the at large or the by district commission. So uh, uh, the, the concept, with all due respect, that there's no place to voice concerns is unfounded. Uh, there are elected officials that set policy in this community. Uh, they can more than uh, uh, aptly direct staff to, to bring changes to the zoning code at any point in time. There's no moratorium on changes to the zoning code. It happens all the time, whether it be at the planning board because people apply for it. Uh, it can also be city initiated uh, changes to the code. So uh, there's a place for that. It already exists. Uh, it has since the inception of the city. And I both think you will agree that contacting your uh, commissioner is not a bad idea.
in any of these cases. Right, right. Well, we're going to take a quick, quick break, and when we return, we'll have our final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about the ongoing issues with Red Tide. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The city of Sarasota is approving new projects at a rapid pace. Will it be an economic boon for the downtown community, or could there be some unintended consequences from overdeveloping? Our guests join us for their final thoughts. And Virginia, we'll start with you about what you see going forward, because the truth is these projects are being built. We're, we're not taking them down, but where do we see this going for our economy? I think this is the best news for our economy. It's a wonderful uh, New Year's present for the city of Sarasota. Visitors pay their own way uh, in terms of the revenue that they generate for a community. Uh, so I think it's a nice way to have business that's year-round in this community. It will help the restaurants stay open in the summer. It will provide a greater audience for our arts groups and new programming for our cultural groups. So I think what we have going on in the city of Sarasota right now is fantastic. And Kevin, your final thoughts on where we're going from here. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a great validation of the quality of life that we do have in the city of Sarasota and the, and the general Sarasota region as a whole. You know, it's a great blend of, of transient accommodations and hotels that bring uh, tourism dollars, both to the bed tax and, and other uh, support for the tourism industry, but also uh, residential type developments that help with our financial and professional services and our year-round businesses uh, that want to make it work here. Uh, and again, going back to something I said earlier, you know, development does come in spurts. If this happens slowly and incrementally over time, it probably wouldn't be as staggering as people see, but that's just the nature of development and I think when you look at the city of Sarasota over time all new development that has come online I think anybody would be hard-pressed to say we are not a better community for the things that have come online all right and then Kate will finish with you with your final thoughts thank you well, I appreciate being invited to come tonight and I would just encourage um, the citizens of the city to contact their commissioners and ask for uh, public hearings and wider sidewalks you know we, we want to have a beautiful city I think all three of us at the table can agree on that. The question is just how do we get there and is that really the direction we're going in right now or not? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. And before we go, we want to share what some of our viewers are saying about a story at the top of our broadcast. The Wildlife Center in Venice is caring for a higher number of birds than usual. They're blaming the increase on red tide that has plagued the Suncoast in recent months. Here's what some of you are saying about this situation. Maureen Flora Carl writes that, is it red tide or the effect of what seems to accidentally get dumped into the Gulf? If it lasts longer than six months, is it really red tide? And Angelina Vanaman writes, every time I go to the beach, there are always dead fish and my family and I get sick after. We need the EPA out here testing this water. I suspect high levels of pesticides and fertilizers in the water personally. If you would like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And if you would like to watch this roundtable later on or our previous discussions, they are available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. I do want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Virginia Haley is the president of Visit Sarasota County. Kevin Cooper is president and CEO of the Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. And Kate Lohman is on the steering committee for the community organization STOP.